Africa has always and still is the prize for the whole world. We as a people have always been the world's richest people, culturally rich, mineral rich. We have always been the prize because we have always had and still have something that other people won't, think they can't do without, and don't care to pay for. chapter 3 and verse 9 he says that the people from Ethiopia and Egypt had a power that was boundless limitless without limit and that was written in 714 BC right around the same time that Isaiah 18 was written so what we're dealing with here is that we're dealing with a, a group of people black people from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia that uh, were basically presidents of the planet if you will uh, people who were in world domination Viewed as animals, viewed as, viewed as tools to build the dreams of the Europeans. Of people with clear affluent features, nose, the profile, and it was just incontrovertible. The facts, the reality that black people had designed this civilization. civilization that black people had created there was a, a definite crisis of the conscience because there were white brothers really intensely fighting this thing called slavery and they were pushing for the the liberation of the black man condemning the the, the trade itself and and freeing slaves in America and they were torn and so you can see where the impetus and the need to uh, formulate rationalizations for this developed. What to do? What are the anthropologists and archaeologists going to do in dealing with this information? And that is what I believe what sponsored 
uh, maybe consciously in some cases, unconsciously in other cases, what we could call the cover-up. The cover-up of the accomplishments of black people. Um, uh, Chancellor Williams wrote a book called The Destruction of Black Civilization. And in this book, he outlines seven points as to why he feels that there was a cover-up. Ignore. Just refuse to publish any facts of African history that don't go along with our racial theories. We need to create a religious and a scientific doctrine so that African slavery will appear that bad after all. What we need to do is flood the world with new African histories that contain our European perspectives only. Start renaming people and places. Replace African names with Arabic and European names. This will disguise their true black identity. Let's change the criteria for defining race. For example, one drop of Negro blood in America makes you a Negro, no matter how light the skin. Yes, when we're putting ancient African history, reverse the standard. No matter how dark the skin, woolly the hair, or thick the lips, you don't have to be a Negro. When black contribution to civilization is too obvious, let's find a way to attribute it to outside white influences. When all the ancient historians contradict your theory, we'll just discredit them. Chancellor Williams was a scholar, and we feel that his observations have a lot of merit to them. But there are there are his personal observations. Talk about the the rewriting of history. Um, we have to set that in the context that we're talking about during the 1800s is when this started. We're not really talking about... Uh, you look in the law, today's Los Angeles Sunday Times and they have a, a story on page two about this temple over in Africa. They call it Egypt, but Egypt is in Africa. And uh, the value of which is so tremendous, it points out how the United Na Nations is trying to float a loan of around $30 million to save this temple from being covered with by the waters that will be brought up by this Aswan Dam that they're trying to build over there. And and uh, this thing is so shrewdly done that the average Negro will re look at it and read it, and because it says Egypt, he never identifies it with him or him with it. It shows you how shrewd the white man is. And But when you all you have to do is look at the features of the thing, and you can see, brother, brother they got all the features that the white man says Negroes have. But because it is associated or connected with something of such value, archaeological and historic anthropological value, the white man tries to steal it for himself and says, no, these are white people, these aren't black people. The Los Angeles Times today, and read page two, and look at this for yourself. Look closely at it, and then, uh, and if you notice, you'll also read in there where the United States is on record as being against putting out the money necessary to save this archaeological uh, wonder. They're against it. And it tells you in the uh, paper that they're against it. They want to let it go on and go beneath the waves. There was a time when the America would be for preserving something like that. Because in, in those days, the black man was so dead mentally, he could look right at it and wouldn't know he was looking at himself. He looked right at it and wouldn't know he was looking at himself. And today, when we see a black man, we know that's a black man, whether they call him an Egyptian, a re -Egyptian, or an Egyptian. Don't care what they call him. They all you got, if he look like you, he's the same thing as you. And this man that they have here, brothers and sisters, it has nothing but the features of a pure black man. Also, uh, they tell me that there's a, an exhibition going on in Los Angeles right now somewhere about King Tut. Where is that? Some kind of museum. Where is it? Exposition. Where is it? Oh, exposition Park. Uh, I saw King Tut's uh, uh, mummy, tomb, when I was in Egypt. And uh, what, I don't know if they have the same one here, but if you go and see it, you'll find out that this King Tut, uh, whose mummy or uh, sarcophagus, whatever they call it, they have, is as black as this boy. Yeah. And the white man knows this. Every picture that they have of King Tut, he's not brown. No, he is black, brother, just like this. And uh, the, the black people who lived in that day had mastered science to such extent, had mastered chemistry 
to such extent that they could create colors that uh, the dye hasn't faded to this day. Now you know, you know this, the white man got to paint his house every year. You got to paint yours, inside and out. And you haven't got a piece of cloth at home that won't fade if you, if you put it in the sun. But yet these black people back there could make dye that has retained the color, same grade quality, right down to the, to the day from five and six thousand years ago. They were master chemists. And uh, the, this tomb, and I guess this, rather, this, uh, what you call it, mummy, is gold encrusted. They had so much gold back then. In fact, those were the people who discovered gold. They knew what gold was. White men didn't know what gold was. And uh, they encrusted their mummies with gold and beautiful colors and, right. and just laid them there. And finally, when, they, when the white man discovered them, he was shook up and wondered, how could these people back so long ago, supposed to be dumb, know so much about so much? Know, yeah, know so much about so many things. We have always been the prize because we have always had and still have something that other people won't think they can't do without and don't care to pay for.